All right, this is going to be the tutorial for this book. Um, I do have a walkthrough on another video. This is the Cottage Life paper, and I'm gonna be using a different paper for my tutorial. The paper I'm gonna use is called A Mother's Love, and that is from Country Craft Creations. It's one of their exclusive lines. So it'll have a little bit different look to it. When I do my tutorials, I don't really do the matting with you. I just do the construction of the book. Um, also, you're gonna want some sort of notebook and pen. Um, I do give you the measurements in the video, but I do not have them typed in the description box um, because of how much time it takes. So um, let's go ahead and get started. This is a trifold. If you haven't watched the video on this one, uh, it's up on my channel. So we're going to start with the cover. And you're going to need two that are five by nine. This is chipboard. Two that are five by nine. One that is one, four, one and one fourth by nine and one piece that's one by nine. So I'm gonna have one of my spines a little bit larger so that it lays nicer. And then the paper to cover the chipboard, you're gonna need two that are seven by 11, one that's four and one fourth by 11, and one that is four by 11. So when we do our albums, we do two inches larger, except for on the spines, we want one and a half inches on each side. So we're gonna, we add three to our dimension on the side. It's still one inch top and bottom. So this is what the larger pieces will look like. We're gonna wrap them on all four sides. The spines, we just wrap the top and the bottom and I'll show you how to do that. So if you are familiar with wrapping chipboard, you can fast forward, but I'm gonna go ahead and do two with you. I did two um, off camera. So let's start with our chipboard. So you are going to need to put adhesive on the back. I prefer uh, the score sheets rather than glue. I'm going to use um, my one inch spacers at the top and on the side. So this is seven by 11, this is five by nine. Make sure that you uh, burnish this once you put this on your chipboard, the adhesive. The reason I don't like glue is just because it gives, I can see the lines and it kind of ripples a little bit. And even though you cover it with pattern paper, I just don't like that. So I always use my score tape. So you bump it up on the top and the side here. Now you have a perfect one inch border. We used to use chipboard we would um, instead of the acrylic, but now that Tammy has these in her store, it makes it much more handy some glue on there or something. So then just make sure that you burnish that so that the paper has got a real nice stick to it. And then the, um, let's go ahead and finish this piece first. So when you're doing these larger pieces, like I said, you're gonna wrap on all four sides. So I take tape and I put it around the perimeter of my chipboard and I do put it around the perimeter of my paper. I wanna make sure that this has a really strong hold because it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. I wanna make sure that I've used the best and the most adhesive that I can. So I do the perimeter of the chipboard first. And I do save a little bit of score tape by putting that on after I miter my corners. I do miter my pages a little bit different than uh, some of the people at Country Craft Creations, but you do it in the way that you like. There's no really right or wrong way. It's just what you're comfortable with. So then I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that on. And you'll do both pieces like this, both of the five by nines. So before I put my score tape here, I'm going to miter. I miter at an angle and I do leave a little bit of space uh, between the paper and the chipboard. So do not cut all the way to straight to the corner. I use this to help me to make sure that I have the right amount of paper so that it does wrap that corner. And I'm just gonna slice those off at an angle so you can kind of see how much paper that was left. I'd say about an eighth of an inch would work. Two more. All right, so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. So before um, we wrap it, then let's go ahead and put 
the score tape now on the perimeter of the paper. So I just put it on this piece here. I don't do the uh, sides. I just do this one strip. Because I do use glue also. As always, we're going to burnish that back um, tape to make sure the backing comes off nicely and leaves the adhesive on the paper like it's supposed to. Alright, so then we're going to train our paper by bringing that chipboard up and over so to lay it down. And then that's going to give us It's going to train the paper so it knows where to fold. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. Okay, so I do my long sides first. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing of my score tape. And you're going to want to do these sides also because they'll get in the way when you wrap your paper over. So we want a nice crisp edge. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and place glue along the chipboard right up against it. Just a thin line. You don't need to go crazy. And then I just put in some glue in between the chipboard and the score tape that I already had there. I'm going to bring it up and over. I'm really going to push that paper up against the chipboard so it has a nice stick. And then we want it to lay down nice and flat. And then we're going to burnish that. I'm trying to cover up that so it's not distracting. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my bone folder across the crease here. Okay. And it should be nice and smooth. So then I do the opposite side. Again, glue up against the chipboard. And then fill in just a little bit in between the uh, chipboard and paper. I'll just use this one. Go ahead and burnish that. And don't forget that edge. But look, how, can you see how smooth that is? It's super smooth. So because I miter my uh, covers at an angle here, I have to tuck in that little excess that we left to cover the corner. So I just kind of push down and in with my bone folder. So I will show you this after I do my four corners. Just to make sure that the edge of the chipboard doesn't show. And so it'll lay nicer and you won't have as much paper poking out there on the corners. So can you see how I just kind of push those down and try to push them in? So then we do the same thing on these short sides. We're going to put glue on the chipboard first. Fill in. So I like to keep my fingernails kind of just to make sure that those little corners stay down and then I bring up my paper. And we want to burnish that and the edge. I think I get a better burnish on these when I use this 
bone folder. That's a Teflon. There are different ones that Tammy sells at Country Craft Creations that you can take a look at, but I really do like the Teflon ones for this. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have those down. Give it a good burnish. And Okay, so there we go. It should be pretty perfect because we don't want to skimp, remember, on the covers. So I'll put that one to the side. We have another one to do. So this one we do differently. Whenever you're doing a spine piece, we want to make sure that we add a little bit of extra paper just to make sure with all the opening and closing that it's a little bit more durable and hangs on there. So we go, like I said, an inch and a half on each side, inch on the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is use my one inch acrylic spacer at the top and I'm going to do one up, uh, I got to have the one and a half and the one and a half inch piece on the side. So if you're using chipboard to kind of help you or if you just line it up with the ruler, one and a half and one. So again, you put adhesive on the back of your chipboard and I've already burnished it. And I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backing. There we go. And for the most part, we're done with those spacers. Uh, let me go ahead and burnish this. these out of the way. If I bump the camera, sorry. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Sorry. Um, let's cover up this light because it drives me crazy. All right. I'm going to go ahead and burnish. So just like we did before, let's go ahead and train our paper. So you do want to fold it on all four sides. And I just give it a little burnish. And the ends. Now again there are different ways to do this so you if you have a different technique go for it. All right so I'm just gonna put score tape on these little pieces at the end the short pieces. not the long ones. Okay, so what I do now is I use the technique that Tammy first came out with. I get a better coverage that way. A lot of people cut out this whole rectangle. I don't. So I'm going to cut this at an angle so that I'm cutting off a triangle and getting rid of some of the bulk of the paper. And I'm going to do that on all four of the corners. So when you're done, this should make a trapezoid. I always say that people laugh when I say that, but that's what it's called. Okay. So now we're going to start with the glue. I'm going to go ahead and take this backing off. I'm going to put glue up against the chipboard. I fill in in that trapezoid area even in those little triangles on the corner. And I'm going to put some glue up against the chipboard. I saw Sandy Trefker do that and I thought, wow, that's smart. So that the paper sticks really well um, on the side of the chipboard. So I'm going to bring that up and over and I'm going to tuck this paper right up against that chipboard. That's why we put a little glue there and I'm just going to flatten that out. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Tuck it up against that chipboard and flatten out the side. OK, 
Okay, so that's what it should look like. Now I'll do the other end the same way. Fill in that trapezoid area, the little triangles, and this square at the end. Um, I'm also going to put about a fourth of an inch on the sides, maybe half inch, up against the chipboard. Just put a little glue there. As I bring this up and over, I want to tuck that right up against the chipboard. I have excess glue here. And on this side too. I always get excess glue that squeezes out. Now just like I did before, I do want to just kind of give this a little burnish here on the end. So we're going to be attaching the covers to these spines. And so if you leave these straight, you might not get it perfect enough that you might actually see this poke up above your book. So we do need to do a light miter on this. And so what I do is I'm going to rest my scissors up against the chipboard and cut at an angle and just take off a little bit. Not very much, but see the way we did it now, I can make sure that that corner is still covered. Sometimes I've tried other ways and I still get a little bit of the chipboard poking out, so I don't need to do that way anymore. So I'm going to rest my scissors, cut at an angle. So that's what that end looks like. And I'm going to repeat that on the opposite end. There you go. So I have two of those done. So now as we put the book together, the cover, let me get rid of some of my mess here. Okay. Um, as we put the book together, you're going to alternate large piece, small piece, large piece. Uh, I lied. Let's see. Um, large piece then small oh you guys i need three pieces of chipboard oh my gosh i'm gonna have to go back and add a note i'm looking at this thinking that ain't gonna fold up right on my paper i was gonna do just a regular album and then i ended up doing a trifold so uh we need three pieces not two so you need another i'm so sorry we need another five by nine piece and another piece of paper that is seven by 11. And we're gonna cover that. Sorry, let's go back and do that and get caught up here. Okay, I have my third piece covered. Um, were there any of you out there saying, uh, Kim, you forgot to do the third one. Why do you only have two pieces if it's a trifold? Okay, so this is what we're gonna end up doing. We're gonna be attaching the large pieces to the spine pieces. Um, I've already done one. What I wanted to show you is just kind of what it will look like um, once we have it put together. Okay, so you'll see that there is a little bit of a ridge, and that's okay. Um, but we place the covers, um, when we do this, we place the raw side down and the covered side on top. Okay, so let me show you how to prepare your chipboard. So this piece, there's nothing we need to do. It's already ready. Um, I'm gonna put this right here so that you can see that I crossed off the two and put threes. So I feel so dumb. Okay, so what you wanna do um, with the spine piece is you want to make sure that you burnish the paper right up against that chipboard and that's how you get that real defined ridge so that the cover can sit down on top of this. Um, so we're gonna place Oh, this, um, score tape on about an eighth of an inch away from the chipboard and I put one at the bottom the center and then close to the chipboard but not right at the chipboard because you're going to be folding this and you don't want adhesive all the way to the end so let me go ahead and do this side I've already done this side so I'm just going to look and eyeball and say okay about an eighth of an inch ish away from the chipboard okay and then 
and just go ahead and snip that. Then I go and do the outside. And I do one piece in the center. And I do use glue also then to give it some wiggle room. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that. Okay, so when we're making our book, we want to start with a large piece. So we're going to have a 5 by 9 Now, it doesn't matter if you do the 1 inch spine next or the 1 and a fourth. It doesn't matter at this point because you can have your book this way or you can end up turning it and having it this way. So grab one of your spine pieces uh, and we'll attach it. But it's going to go uh, cover, spine, cover, spine, cover. So let's go ahead and adhere one of these together so you can see what this looks like. I do a dry run first and I kind of look at make sure it lines up nice because sometimes you just by the way you fold your paper it might look a little bit different. Okay uh, so let's go ahead and take the backing off of one of the sides here. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my art glitter glue and I put just a little bit in between the two pieces of score tape. If it goes over the score tape a little bit, that's okay. And then I put a fine line at the edge of that score tape near the chipboard. Okay, so there's still an eighth of an inch gap. With the raw side down, I'm going to set this up and I kind of hold it up a little bit until I've got it in the right spot. I go al almost exactly to the chipboard, almost. I mean like it is super close. And then I lay it down. I turn it over and you want to burnish it real well. Okay, so we have that. Now I need to attach a cover piece. So I have already put my cover spine cover. So now I just need to attach this piece to this piece. So it does get a little long. Let's go ahead and remove the backing. Right. And again, get that glue ready in between. And then right at the very edge of that score tape, still about an eighth of an inch from the chipboard. Okay, I'm going to line these up, kind of hold it up a little bit until you're happy with the location. and press down. All right, so this method then, I could actually fold this all the way down. Just like so. So I'm kind of training my paper and my cover so it knows how it's going to bend here. Okay. So we do want to cover these spine pieces and I just use Artisan. So when I cut the pieces uh, that were 7 by 11 to cover my uh, covers, I had a 5 inch strip left. So I use that 5 inch strip and this is what I'm going to use to cover these. So you'll need two that are 5 by 8 and 7 eighths. 
Now, you, I do not use glue on this because I've had a heck of a time with glue getting bubbly and ripply and I can't stand it. So I go ahead and I fully put score tape, score sheets on the whole back side. You're going to remove the backing and then you're going to center it so that you cover both of these wings so that there won't be um, two ridges. You don't want the ridge of this paper and this paper, so we want to cover that. And you're going to center it top and bottom and left right there. Okay, so you'll have one there. You'll remove the backing. Again, you want to cover both of these wings so that they um, don't show. And we're going to center it side to side, top to bottom. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So I burnished my covers for the spines real well. And so now you want to start folding your book a little bit and letting it get used to the fold. So I just kind of tuck my, I lightly kind of run my bone folder as I'm lifting it up. And you should be able to take it all the way down like so. Then I'm going to do the other side. Just kind of run my bone folder up against the chipboard as I'm bringing it up. And you can actually bring it all the way down. I would do that just to try and make sure that tape is tucked in there between the two pieces. All right, so um, I'm going to have my larger spine on the right hand side, that one and a fourth, the smaller, the larger on the right, the smaller on the left. Now, I actually had this book open on this way first. Usually my books open this way first, but I wanted to do something different. So I have my book open to the right hand side. I have the larger spine on the right, and then we have this. So our cover is done. I got mine wet on accident. Oh. Okay. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next part. I'll get all my pieces cut and labeled with the measurements so that you can write those down and work on your cutting. We are ready to go to the inside of the book, and so I thought I'd show you again what it looks like so that you have an idea. Uh, there's a flat behind here. This is a belly band. This, there's one hinge that we put a page on, waterfall pocket, okay? So it's a, it'll be a quick, uh, an easy book to put together. So let me remind you that you'll need a notebook so you can write down these measurements. Let's go ahead and start with the, oh, let's see. Um, I gotta find my pieces here. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and start with the covers. So on the left hand side, we had a pocket with a flap. And so you're going to need two pieces, one that's four and a half by six and one that's five by five and one fourth. And for the back cover, all I did was a belly band and that's two by six. So you'll just need one of those. The belly band, you're going to place the six inches across your scoreboard, score at one half and at five and a half. Okay, so you have two half inches on these two sides. For the left side, you're gonna place your four and a half inches across the top, score at one half. On the six inch side, you're gonna score at one half and at five and a half. So this will become a pocket, so you have like a U shape of half inch borders. The piece that is five by five and a fourth, this is the flap that will go up. You're going to place the five and a fourth inches across the top, score at one half. So then we're going to prepare those pages. So on the one that I just did, that is five by five and a fourth, 
let's just go ahead and miter. So from the score line out, I just take off a light angle here and same at the bottom. That's what we have there. And then you will want to burnish your score line. My bracelet's making a lot of noise, sorry. Okay. This uh, is the four and a half by six piece. This is a pocket. So I'm gonna miter at the top. Down at the bottom where you have the intersecting lines, I'm gonna cut that at an angle and take out that square. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, let's go ahead and burnish that also. So fold it back on the bump, bumpy side, burnish. And the belly band, just go ahead and burnish. You don't have to do any mitering on that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our book. I'm gonna start with the left-hand side. So I have the smaller spine here, the larger spine on my right. That's because I'm having this side on the top. So if you wanna reverse that, you can. So with the pocket, we're gonna tuck in the two sides and then bring up the bottom and we're gonna glue that to that front cover and you wanna make sure it doesn't cross the score. So I'm gonna take it all the way to the left and to the bottom so that it does not get in the way of that fold. So let's use our glitter glue to do that. on all three sides. Okay, and I'm gonna hold into those two sides as I lay this down. And once it looks good, go ahead and push down and burnish. Now I'm not, I don't give the size of the mats. For this project, I think you should just look at your scraps and see what you have and use those so they don't go to waste. Okay, so this one is gonna go at the top and you'll notice that there is just a hair of a space. We want that so that it doesn't catch on the pocket. And that's why we use a mat um, to put in to keep that closed. So I'm gonna actually turn my book upside down so it's easier to glue. And when I put this on, I'm gonna put it almost to the top. And I just wanna make sure that these sides line up. So again, I'm using the glue on the half inch almost to the top. So it's gonna kinda line up with this paper we glued to cover the spine. And I need to make sure that those line up. And I think that does it. So now I burnish. Now, if you want, you can do a decorative punch on this if you want. You could make a uh, finger, a, uh, use a punch here so that you can put, take things in and out easier. Um, I might go back and do a punch on the top corner pieces, but I haven't decided yet. So that's all we do with that. Then you'll add mats, okay? On the back, let me double check my book. Yep, um, we're going to put the belly band down first before we put our pattern paper on. So you can kind of eyeball it where you like it. 
I'm going to put mine probably about an inch and a half to two inches up. Let me give you more precise. Yep, about two inches from the bottom. Again, you want to make sure you watch here so that it doesn't get in the way when we fold our cover. So don't cross that line. And about two inches up. And burnish those. And that's it for the covers. That was really easy. Now for the inside, let's go ahead and do the pocket and the waterfall. Now this might be a little bit different for you depending on what you're using for the waterfall. So you're going to need the, an actual pocket and we're going to use this pocket to put our um, waterfall on top of. This is four and a half by nine and seven eighths. Now I used the die from this collection the one that has the holes in it, you'll see that, and I'm going to use that as my waterfall. So from one end to the very tip here, it measures six inches. And usually we do a half inch score, but this one has a little bit more of a deeper score. This is a almost a three-fourths inch score. Okay, so if you're doing, you need six of these. If you're not using this die, they were six inches long. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you how wide they are. Uh, four inches wide, so four by six. And then I went down about three, four, seven inch because that's what this one was. Okay. All right. So um, I have already, you can see my score mark is already there. The die does that for me. You do not miter waterfalls, so you just fold on the score and burnish. So you're going to do that to all six pieces. You can use really any tick uh, tag die when you're doing these waterfalls. You just score them at one end and fold them over so they have a more decorative bottom. And we like our waterfalls to lay real flat, so the better you burnish, the flatter it's going to be. Okay, last one. So there are my six waterfall pages, and I'm going to glue those onto my pocket. So this one, the one that was four and a half by nine and seven eighths. Let's go ahead and prepare that by mitering the top. So a slight angle. Again, pockets down at the bottom where the two lines intersect, you'll see a square. We're going to cut at an angle on either side of that square, like so. Go ahead and burnish that too. On all three sides. So we are going to, the pocket will go on this way so that the opening is here and we're going to place our waterfall on top of that. So I actually put my waterfall pages on before I attach it to the book. So to do that, I'm going to kind of use my scoreboard if possible to kind of help me line everything up. So I have my half inch scores on my pocket tucked underneath. I'm going to place glue on this tab part here that, remember mine was about three-fourths of an inch. Okay, and I want it at the very top here and line it up on the side. And when I work this one, let's, there we go. 
And then I want to burnish that real well. So if you are using this die, when you go to do your matting, you'll have to remember that this is a little bit thicker um, than what we normally do. And so you're going to want to cut about, if this was about three-fourths, you're going to go about a five-eighths strip here. I have a little bit of an overhang here that I'm going to trim up. There we go. Okay, and you're going to continue then butting up that score underneath the previous one that was glued down. And then again, before you burnish anything, you just want to make sure that everything lines up real well. So I'm going to kind of fold this down. Yep, they line up nice and neat on the side, so now I can burnish that. Okay, you're going to continue to do that until you've done all six pages. So lift that one up. We're going to bump it up against this piece. Once you have all of the pages glued down, it is now time to put your pocket on the back center. And we're going to line it up top and bottom. And it should be pretty much almost to the top and to the bottom. And you don't want to get in the way of this channel here where you close your book. So you want to make sure that it stays out of the way there. So you're going to place glue. Um, I'm actually going to put the side pieces in first. That just kind of helps the tags not get caught on that half inch on the bottom as you're putting them in. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and line that up. Looks pretty straight. My hands have glue on them. And go ahead and burnish that down. Okay, so now you have also a pocket here. All right, so now we're going to do a hinge on this spine right here and put just one page on. So let's do the hinge. We make the hinge a hair short, at least I do, so that um, you don't have to do any angling on the hinge and your page will fit on without any kind of struggle. So you're gonna need a one and a half by eight and three fourths inch piece. And we're gonna score with the one and a half at the top you're going to score at one half and at one. Okay, so then you're going to burnish those score marks. We did it one half and at one. Okay, and to kind of fold back on this one also. Okay, so we're going to attach one of the half inch strips to the book and we're going to glue two of these together to make the hinge. Now I happen to have a little bit of an overhang so if I glue these two pieces together to make a hinge I can feel there's a little bump. So on this very last uh, rectangle, I'm going to shave just a hair off. And I'll do that on my trimmer. Uh, maybe.
So when I say I trimmed a hair, I mean a hair, okay? So that when I glue these two pieces together, I don't have a bump down here and it'll lay down flat on my book. Okay, so let's just glue two of them together. I just put it on the inside, on one side. And I'm gonna push that together and burnish it so that they stay together. All right, and now we're going to attach this to our book. So we have the thicker one, and then that's when we glued together. And then we have the half inch that we're going to attach to the book. Let's just go ahead and set that to the side for right now before we attach it and do the page, the base page. You're going to need two pieces for that base page. You're going to have a four and a half by eight and seven eighths, and you're going to have a piece that's four and a half by nine and seven eighths. The one that is eight and seven eighths, the shorter one, you don't do any scoring. The one that is nine and seven eighths, you're going to score at one half on the nine and seven eighths side. You're going to turn it around and you'll score at half again. Okay. We're going to slightly miter on each end. And then let's burnish that. Okay, so what's going to happen is we are going to glue the 8 and 7 8 sheets on top to make our page and just kind of look to make sure you have everything lined up and it matches nice and mine does, it matches pretty darn well. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this one on first, so I'll just put glue on one of the half inch pieces and I'm going to line that up. And burnish. And the other side should be all ready to line up. Let me just double check the back. Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and glue the other side down. Let me check to see how I put that hinge on. I had to be conscious of the covers, so I actually did not center my hinge. I placed it more to the side here. So um, I will show you how I did that. Let me double check. Yes, okay. So let's get our book. And I'm going to place the half inch that was not glued. That's what I'm going to glue to the book. I went almost to the edge. So I'm going to fold this down just so you can see. I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch from my cover. So I'm not going all the way to the end of the chipboard. I'm going about an eighth of an inch. Okay, and I want to center it top and bottom. Okay, so I have glue. I'm going to turn this sideways. It's just easier for me. I'm going to hold it down so that I pinch it like this so I can see that I line it up evenly. And I'm going about an eighth of an inch. 
like so. That looks pretty even to me. So then I burnish it and then I have that hinge that stays up. Okay. Alright, so now if we measured correctly, th our page should be a hair longer than the hinge. We want to do a dry fit. Yep, and we want to make sure that it lays nice on our hinge. So I always do a dry fit first. When I glue this, I want to make sure, if I can get it back on there. When I glue, I kind of, um, I don't go all the way to the bottom of the hinge. I leave just a little bit of space because I don't want it all over the place. And I lay it down to make sure that it is, yep, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put glue on both sides of my hinge. I do not go all the way to the bottom. I don't want it to squirt out and make a mess. I went pretty close on that one by accident. Okay. I'm going to slide this on. And I kind of lay it down. I don't want to push it all the way down, almost, but not quite. And I'm going to flip it over to this side. And it looks like I need to move that one here. Okay. And we are burnishing on both sides. See how fast this comes together? All right, so now uh, let's do uh, okay, let's have the um, page open. Uh, the page is folded in towards the left side and we're going to do the two flaps. Those were four and three fourths by five and both of them were. And we are going to miter those. Did I tell you those measurements already? I don't think I did. Sorry. You need two that are four and three fourths by five. You're going to place the four and three fourths inches across the top and score at one half on both of them. Then we miter. Sorry about that. I got ahead of myself. You can do a decorative punch on the edge. I'm going to hold off on the punch because we're going to have to trim one of these to have them line up nicely in our book and I'll show you why. When you stack them one on top of the other, it's going to take away some of the width on one of the, um, whichever one is on the bottom, uh, or is it the top? Uh, the one that's on the bottom, yeah. So let's see here. All right, so when I did mine, I placed the top flap down first. Oh, that's not true. I placed the bottom one down first. Okay, so let's go ahead and place that one and it goes on, it goes to the bottom of the page. So let's glue that one first, the bottom one. And I'm going to glue it I'm going to put glue on the inside here and I'm going to put it in the opening and slide it down. Okay, so I'm not gluing it on top of this. I'm putting, I'm gluing the inside of that half inch and I'm going to slide it inside of here. And then we'll go back and seal this closed. So glue on the inside half. Slide it in that opening on our page. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. See? Make sure it's pushed in all the way. 
Okay, so there's one page, one flap. So now we're going to glue the next one. And when we do that, we're going to glue it um, I want to do it. What do I want to, yep, I'm going to have to. I think I screwed that one up, did I? I've got to pay attention here. Let's see. I glued that one on the inside here, like so. So when I close this, you're going to see that it's not lined up exactly right. We're going to have to shave that off just a hair, and that's going to happen when you have the staggering, you know, when one is on top of the other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to take about, it was between a sixteenth and an eighth inch off. So just a sliver. So now let's see if that lines up better. Yep, like so. So here's what I mean. I had to take a sliver off so that this and this line up. So now I can glue that down and I glued that one on top of the page. So I put the glue on the outside, half inch. I want to bring it all the way to the top. Now, I'm, before I burnish too much, I'm going to lay that down and make sure that it's lined up fine. Then I'm going to burnish it. Okay. So now I can go and do a decorative punch on the edge if I want. Now we have to seal this page. So you'll see it's open. You can leave it open if you want to and put something in there. I'm going to seal it. And this is not down all the way. So I'm just running some glue in there. Did I get enough glue? And I'm going to make sure I have a dry wet wipe nearby. In case anything comes out or oozes out. Okay. And now we're ready to do the last page, which is opening the page to the right hand side. And that one is a long pocket with a skinny pocket for like a journaling tag. And I did put a belly band on this one with a magnet so that when I put a paper or a mat in here, it doesn't fall out. Okay, so let's do that next. So the papers you're going to need for that one, you're going to need one that is three by nine and seven eighths. You're going to need one that's three and a half by seven and a half. And my belly band, I did one and a half by four and a half. Okay. The scoring, let's start with the three by nine and seven eighths. This is going to be a long pocket. So starting with the long side across the top, you're going to score at one half. Rotate it one time so that the short side is across the top. Score it one half. And you're going to rotate it one more time. And score it one half. So half, half, and half. Again, it's like a U shape. On the one that's three and a half by seven and a half, let's start with the three and a half across the top. Score it one half. Rotate it one time so that the long side is across the top. Score it a half. One more time. Score it a half. So again, you just have the score on three sides. The belly band just gets one score. 
place the four and a half inches across the top, score it a half. Okay. So my pocket was three and a half. So I want to put a little thumb hole right here. So I want to center that. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, let's see. Three, one and a half. One and three fourths. So I'm going to use this. And I'm going to center it. The one, this side doesn't have any score. And I'm going to... This... I like this, but there's no guidelines, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it here to see if I have the same amount. I'm looking at the center of this. So there's about one and a fourth on that side. Nope, about one and... It's not going to be perfect. Let's see, what do we have here? I can't get it to line up perfect, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay, so that's what I did. I'm going to go ahead and miter the top here and the other side. And then I'm going to take out those squares in the corner on the bottom at an angle. And we are going to want to burnish those. And just a little piece there. Oh. Okay, let's set that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and burnish my belly band piece. You don't have to miter this because it's going to be in the center of the page. So you don't need to worry about any overhang. You won't see it when we cover it with pattern paper. And one more pocket. So we, once again, we miter the top. We take out the squares in the corner. And you got it. We're going to miter again. I'm not doing a very good job of folding this on the score. So with the opening here on the right, so the half inch on my left, I'm going to glue this pocket right on top and it should be the same width. And it is. So we want to line it up bottom and sides to make sure it lines up neatly. that up. And go ahead and burnish that down. Bring your book over. So we're going to glue this onto the page, not all the way to the bottom of that page, but almost. Okay, so pretty close. We don't want it to get in the way when we open it to the left. So we want to give it just a little bit of space. So 
I'm putting glue on. Alrighty. Um, I think I'm going to turn my book so I can do it sideways here. Almost to the edge, but not quite. Look at the top and the bottom, see if it lines up. thing is the belly band and you can decide where you want it you might want to put it right about halfway you are going to need a magnet here and a magnet here so I have the basic gray magnets uh, somewhere what did I do with them um, I put them in a new place so I wouldn't lose them and I lost them what did I do with those? Oh, I see them. Okay. All right. So these are the magnets I use. They're by Basic Gray. I get them at Country Craft Creations. And I'm going to take out a positive and a negative. I'm going to go ahead and place one. So I'm going to look to see about where the magnet should go. I want it to be about right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the backing off of one of them. You don't want your magnet too close to the end because you want your pattern paper to go over it. Now I want to go ahead and place a skinny piece of score tape just to kind of help prevent it from moving. If I can find the end, there it is. Nope, where's the end of my tape? Okay. Let's go ahead and put the other side on. Now let's glue it onto the page. Again, I'm just going to eyeball where I like it. I'm going to try about in the center. And it goes all the way to the edge of that page. And burnish it down. So now I need to remove the backing here so that it knows where to where it should be placed on that skinny pocket. Sometimes I have a heck of a time getting the backing off. Okay. So you're going to close it, push down, and it should be in the right spot. And then once again, I'll just get a little piece Of score tape help it from moving around so now it's just really a bit matter of decorating and matting I will tell you that again I put a hole on my back cover about in the center and I used two pieces of seam binding then to close it I did not put a hole in there though until I did all my um, pattern paper my matting so it looks like this so I put a hole, I actually used um, an eyelet that's a little bit bigger. And then I put the two pieces through and knotted them together so that they don't go through the hole. And then that's how I attach the seam binding. So I'm going to decorate this off screen. I'm, like I said, I'm going to be using a different paper collection. So I will 
finish that and put pictures of what it looks like on the Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations page when I'm done. But I will go ahead and show you real quick, just a real quick run through of what I did to decorate so that it's on one video so you don't have to go look at the other one of the walkthrough. All right, so here we have a plain paper. I have a, um, a pocket and I just put some cut aparts. I only glued the pocket on three sides, put the tag in. Because my book was nine inches tall and my paper was an eight by eight, I had to use some paper piecing here. On this side, I did some fussy cutting, chipboard piece. These cutouts, uh, mats hold the this closed, okay? So it doesn't flap around. This, I did nothing. I just matted the fronts and the backs and put a piece of paper in between to cover up those holes. I do have just a mat inside the pocket. Use your scraps. I did, I don't know if you can see that. I had a punch of, or a die of a little fence, two butterflies, a swish, put a little um, flower arrangement down here. Be careful though, so you don't get the flowers too low that it won't go in the pocket. Have a little butterfly up here. On this side, I just put the word hope down here with a little tab so that I could open it up easily. A little um, a piece of ephemera opened up so that I could put a uh, cutout. A window die with a piece of the paper behind it. Nothing on top because it was busy. And I just kind of used some ephemera here and there on my mats. So I hope that was a nice, easy project. It would be a good one for a beginner. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. And like I said, I'll put it on the scrapbookers page. I appreciate you coming to my channel. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the uh, comment section down below. Thank you. Have a good night.